God, your love never fails us. It never fails us. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen. This morning, we're going to talk about how much God loves us. How much? How many people know that God is a jealous God? He's a jealous one. Come on, God. He doesn't like sharing this with anybody else. So this next song talks about the jealousy, that love that God has for each and every one of us. Amen? We're to say, God, you're a jealous God. And so am I, right? I don't like know what it is with my God. And I know that he feels the same way for us, plus more. So this one verse can say, thank you, God, for your love, for that jealous love that you have for us. And because of that jealous love, it means that you protect me, that you love me, that you forgive me. So when I say, God, how do you love me? You worship this God, Jesus. Yes. Yes, Jesus. Will your church worships you, Lord? So 
Oh 
getting touched, it's getting consoled right now. Your family may not be here right now, but this is the moment to declare today. This is the moment to declare today. God, you are the only one who keeps your promises, Jesus. Your word says, God, that from generations to generations, my family and I will bless your name. From my children to their children, to their children, to their children, to their children, they will bless your name.
for this beautiful morning, we have a very special lady, Mama Strong. Why don't you give it away to Mama Strong? She has a very special gift for you, ladies. Amen. Take it away, Mama Strong.
Day Spring Sanders Church. Uh, we got some new faces back over there, so praise God. Thank you so much. Look to your neighbor and say, Welcome to Day Spring. Welcome to Day Spring. Some new faces over here as well, so praise God. Thank you so much. Yeah, so uh, we're so thankful that you guys are here celebrating some of the really the most one of the most important people in our lives today. We're celebrating mothers. Amen. God bless you guys. So we got a, a powerful message for you all. So right now, the kids and our teenagers can get dismissed. You can go to your class. We have our teens class back over there with uh, Alex and the kids. We got uh, this Lisa. And uh, we will get our announcements started. And then we got a message for you guys for Mother's Day, all right? Good morning, Day Spring, and happy Good Mother's morning. Day to all the mothers out there. We are blessed to have you. Our Wednesday night midweek services will be moving to Tuesday nights at 7.30 p.m. The same empowering message, just on a different day. You don't want to miss it. Friday night, May 28th at 8.30 p.m., we will have our first prayer night of 2021. Join us as we pray for your needs and the needs of the church. This is a special time to pray together to our Lord. Don't miss it. Communion will be the third Sunday of each month, May 16th, a special time to have communion with the Lord and others. All are invited to participate. Calling all servant hearts. We are in need of volunteers in the Usher and Greeters Ministry. Even if you serve once a month, it will help. If you are interested, please contact Brother Ivan or Pastor Peter for more details. Our annual Children VBS is back. This year, our theme is Destination Day. It will be on June 15th through the 19th from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. The registration will open next week along with the cost for each child. To make this the most special VBS to date, we need teachers, activity coordinators for indoor and outdoor activities, food servers, audio team, and decoration build and tear down team. It takes a church to put on these blessed events and we need your help. Even if you could only volunteer one day, it helps. Please contact Sister Lisa for more details. 2 Corinthians 9-7 says, Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Thank you for all your support, your words of encouragement, and your giving hearts because it makes it possible for us to do our part in spreading the gospel. From the bottom of our hearts, thank you so very much. Tithing and offering envelopes are in the back of the chairs or at the back table. While you hold me, you will pray prayers that only mamas do. While you are holding me, you are fighting battles your babies never knew. Oh, and I never knew till now. Just how strong you were You're drying all my tears While fighting yours All that darkness you've been through Couldn't dim the light inside of you And all the broken pieces You kept giving them to Jesus And he gave you strength to raise me up Knowing one day I will see He was holding you While you were holding me We hope everyone has a blessed week. Jesus loves you and so do we. Good morning everyone and happy Mother's Day. Um, I'd love to just acknowledge the moms and comments. The Word of God says to honor your mother um, so that it can go well with you. So mamas, can y'all stand up for a moment? 
Yes, let's give him a round of applause. Amen. I bet they can all agree that it's one of the hardest jobs in the world. Amen. Okay, thank you very much. God bless each and every one of you. So happy Mother's Day to all the mothers and all the mothers who are online and listening. Um, I want to say a special mother's, happy Mother's Day to my mom that's sitting right here. So happy Mother's Day, Mommy. Um, so today I want to share a message with you. It's a meant to be an encouraging message to each and every one of the moms. So I'm speaking to the moms directly from my heart and what God has placed in it to share with you today. So if you're a mom of a baby, of a um, toddler, of a child, the school-age child, a teen, a young adult, or even an older adult, this message is for you, and I pray that it encourages you today. Now, if you are not a mom, that's okay. That's okay. Please think of your mom this morning as you hear what God says about being a godly mother. And also, if you have children, think of your wife or the mother of your children, because the Lord will help you encourage them as well. Amen. So the title of this message this morning is The World's Greatest Mom. Wow. That's a huge, huge uh, um, expectation, right? The world's greatest mom. But each of our children deserve that, don't they? Amen. So in the word of God in Proverbs 31, 28, 31, it says, her children rise up and call her blessed. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. So that is something I know that each and every one of us moms here wants to hear from our children, that we call, that they call us blessed and that we surpass all moms in their eyes, right? Not in maybe the eyes of not comparing ourselves to any other mother, but in the eyes of our children. So being a mom is one of the hardest things that it's one of the hardest jobs out there let alone being the greatest mom in the world right so why is it so hard why is it such a difficult task one because as mothers we worry all the time we worry about our children we watch them we make sure that they're going to be okay and and we may, we want to make sure that they are safe and healthy and strong and that they have the right friends that they get the good education that they need we worry about all these things and we worry about if we are enough for our children are we doing enough as a mother and also we worry about are we doing too much Sometimes we worry that we're doing too much for them and not letting them grow on their own. Well, all that worrying, it leads to tiredness and it leads to exhaustion. Too many mothers today are very tired emotionally, physically, mentally, because the work of a mother is never done. It is constant. It is ongoing. It doesn't stop. Our children need us 24-7. And so we are tired right at the end of the day because of all the demands that are on us, whether we work in the home or whether we work outside the home, right? So what do we do when we have all those things that are coming up against us as mothers? We worry. We are tired. And on top of that, it's not only just a hard job. It is something that we are hard on ourselves about. We worry that we are not good enough as mothers. We think about this mother maybe back over here that it looks like they have it all together and everything is going great with them as a mother. Then we look at a mother over here and we say, well, she has more time than I do, so she's doing great, you know? So we tend to compare ourselves to other mothers, and it's because we want to be good, right? We want to be just as good. But one thing that I want to share with you today is don't get into that trap of comparing yourself to other mothers because in reality, all mothers struggle with the same things. We struggle with being enough for our children and making sure that we are the world's greatest mom. We're always striving for that. So you are not alone. So what's the solution? How do we go about this? How do we overcome this hard yet rewarding job that we have to be the world's greatest mom and truly believe that we're doing enough for our children? What do we do? 
Well, in times of uncertainty and in times of doubt, you always go to the word of God. That is where all the answers are. And immediately, my mind goes to one mother in the Bible, and she is Mary, the mother of Jesus. And we all here know Mary, right? She was chosen by God to be the mother of the Savior of the world. I wonder, though, did Mary want to be perfect too, just like you and I? Did Mary worry if she was going to be good enough for the Son of God? I bet, and I don't know, I'm just assuming, and I'm thinking that maybe she was. Maybe she was worried. Maybe she was tired too. Maybe she tried everything that she could to make sure that her son was going to fulfill his purpose, just like you and I do each and every day. So what makes us different? Nothing. Mary was human, and she was of the flesh. So she had the same feelings about who she is or who she was as a mother like we do today. So let us be encouraged that uh, even though Mary was chosen by God, I want you to know today that you were also chosen by God to raise the children that he has blessed you with. Amen. So we can learn a lot about Mary. There's lots of things in the word to help us know how to handle motherhood in a just a loving way and so that we can be that best mother that we want to be. So let's look at Mary for a moment. Mary had lots of strength and courage. When you go to Luke 1, 35, it reads, The angel replied, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy, and he will be called the Son of God. And you go on to read in 37, it says, For the word of God never fails. You hear that? The word of God never fails. And then Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you said about me come true. And then the angel left her. Mary was obedient. She took the challenge. And she had to find strength in herself or in God. In God. So that she can have the strength and courage that she needed to be the mother that God needed her to be to his son. He chose Mary but he also chose you for your children. Amen. In Deuteronomy 31.6, it reads, So be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid and do not panic before them. For the Lord your God will personally go ahead of you. He will neither fail you nor abandon you. He is not going to fail you or abandon you in motherhood. He is not going to fail you or abandon you as you raise the children, his children, that he has blessed you with and given you. So let's be encouraged today by Mary's act of strength and her act of obedience and courage because we, too, have shown strength and courage with the children that God has given us. We said yes to Jesus when we became pregnant and when he gave us the children that he gave us, right? So we, too, can say we are courageous and strong. Another thing about Mary that we can learn about is that Mary trusted God. In Luke 1, 43 through 48, it reads, You are blessed because you believe that the Lord would do what he said. Mary responded, Oh, how my soul praises the Lord. How my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he took notice of this lowly servant girl. And from now on, all generations will call me blessed. Amen. Do you know today that God took notice of you? He saw you. He knew you. He already ordained the children that you were going to have. And so because he provided for you, he will continue to provide for you each and every day for what you need to raise your children. The word of God tells us in Proverbs 3, 5, 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Sorry, depend on not your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do and he will show you which path to take. So when we trust him, as mothers with our children, he shows us the path to take. 
He shows us what decisions that we have to make that are best for our children. He is the one that knows the beginning and the end, and he is going to tell you exactly what your children need. So all that worrying we do, right, where we worry about all our children, the solution is trust, trusting in God. Mary had to trust in God, too. She, raised, um, she had to raise him to fulfill his purpose. And even when it was hard, she needed to trust that God didn't make a mistake. He chose the right girl. He chose the perfect mother for his son. And was she perfect? Probably not. But for him, he was. She was. So do we trust in God's plan for us and for our children? Just like Mary trusted in God's plan for um, Jesus? He is good. God is good. And Mary goes on to say in verse 46, for the mighty one is holy and he has done great things for me. He has done great things for you. You are here today with your children because he has gotten you to this point. And we need to give him all the thanks and glory. He has done the same for us, just like he has done for Mary. And so God can be trusted. We can trust him. So as we look to become the world's greatest mother out there and that aspiration that we have, one of the most important things that I see in Mary is that she had a relationship with God, a personal relationship with God. So we have to have a strong personal relationship as mothers with our God, our Lord and Savior, so that he can use us to fulfill the purpose of our own children. It starts there. It starts with us having that relationship, that trust with God. Do you go to God when your child needs something or you don't know what to do, you have doubt on what to do next with your child? Do you go to God or do you go to everybody else first? Because today God is saying that he wants you to trust him and he wants you to go to him first. He has all the answers, all of them, and he has the answers for your children. Amen. So I ask you again, do you have a strong relationship with God? Do you seek him for everything you need, for wisdom, for guidance, for, for food, for protection, for everything? Only you can answer that question and only I can answer that question for myself. But let me tell you what the word of God says in John 15, 5. He says, yes, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. So apart from God, you cannot be the world's greatest mom that you're striving and wanting to be. Apart from God, we cannot have our children be all that they want or that we believe that they can be. Without God, we cannot do it. But with God, we can. And he is here. He is offering himself to you. He is right there. All you need to do is ask and seek him, and he will be there for you. I, I'm going to share with you today that I don't want to be apart from God and disconnected from him as I raise my children because I can't do this big job alone. I need God to help me, to lead me so that I can raise my children to fulfill the purpose that they have, their God-given purpose. I can't make it happen for them, but I know who can, and that's God. Amen. So the good fruit that um, this verse talks about, that good fruit is love, patience, uh, um, um, joy, <laughs> peace. It all just went out of my head. Uh, Self-control, gentleness, faithfulness. Those are the fruits of the spirit that we've been talking about here. Pastor Peter has been sharing with us. Those are the fruits that we want to see in our children as they grow. We want to see that in them. And the way that we're going to see that in them is by having that relationship and being one with God. Our kids are learning from us whether you have those things or whether you don't. They are watching everything that you do and how, you, how your faith is. And we can show them how to have an amazing relationship with God where we trust him for everything that we need.
Amen. I think our children deserve that. So being a mom is a great responsibility. Mary had a great responsibility too. So do we. And here are a couple of things that I want to just share with you today that have been placed in my heart from reading the word of God about how we can be the world's greatest mom in everything that we do with our children. So number one is pray. Pray. Pray for your children. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 says, never stop praying. In Philippians 4.6, it reads, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Thank him because your child is here healthy. Thank him because he has guided you to guide your children to this day. But in order to be able to pray daily and pray without ceasing, without giving up, you have to have a personal relationship with God because that is part of a daily discipline as a disciple, as a Christian. So I encourage you today, get that relationship. And if it's here, get it to there. Wherever it is, I know that you can do it, moms. Number two, love your children and correct them in love. So to be able to love our children the way God loves us, we need to know God's love first, right? So what does God's love look like? How do we pass it on to our children? In 1 Corinthians 13, 4, 7, it says, Love is patient and kind. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. That is our job as a mother, to be patient and kind to our children, to bear all things f that happen with them and believe all things that God says about them and hope all things for them and to endure all things. We can put our names in that where it says love. So instead of love is patient and kind, my mom, hopefully your children are saying my mom is patient and kind. Or I am patient and kind. Amen. I have loved my kids through some tough times. So remember, love conquers all. I can't get past that part. <laughs> Sorry. So number three, encourage your children to fulfill God's purpose in their lives. Encourage them. In 1 Thessalonians 5.11, it says, so encourage each other and build each other up. How do you build somebody else up? How do you encourage your children up? Well, it's focusing on their strengths and telling them what their strengths are. Don't focus on your children's weaknesses. I'm sure they already know what they are. Focus on their strengths. Avoid overcomplimenting them and telling them that they can do anything, right? Because they can. They, they can do whatever God has created them to do. But like Peter has said, if you're not good at math, you're not going to be an astronaut, right? So <laughs> not telling your child that they're going to be an astronaut might not be the right thing to do, <laughs> right? If you know that that is not their gift. Encourage them in their gifts. Amen. Be honest with them. Because when you're honest with them, they can be confident of the person that God has created them to be. And let me just ask you this. If you don't encourage your children then who is going to do it? I'm going to tell you who's going to do it. It's going to be the world. And they're not going to encourage them to do the things that maybe you encourage them to do as a mother. So make sure that you take time to encourage your children. And last but not least, protect your child. Protect them from what they see and what they hear as much as you can. I know it depends on the age of your child, but in your home, for sure, number one, you should be protecting what they hear and what they see. In Proverbs 4, 23, it reads, guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. So I want you to listen to that. So whatever you see and whatever comes here through these ears that you hear goes straight to your heart, and that comes out as decisions being made 
for your child. Your child is making decisions based on what they see and hear that is in their heart. So what is it that they're seeing? What is it that they're hearing from you? What is it that they're seeing and hearing from what you have playing or going on in the, in the house? Make sure that it's good, that it's from God, that it's, that it's worthy of, of something good for them to learn from. So, moms, I just want to share with you this one last thing. You are better than you think you are. You are a better mom than you believe you are. You are the greatest mother. You are the greatest mother to your child because they love you. All you need to do is ask them. Ask them, and they will tell you that you are the greatest mom in the world. In the between services, I got a note from my son, and it said, you are the greatest mom in the world. And I think to myself, I, you know, sometimes you want to doubt that, but I'm going to go with what my son tells me. And if that's what he believes, then I'm going to believe it too. So you are the greatest mom to your children. They love you. But can you be better? Can I be better? Absolutely. We can always be better at being a mother to our children. So what, can, what do we need to do first and foremost, like we mentioned already, is to work on your faith and your relationship with God. That is number one. You can't skip that step. There's no passing that. Because whatever you have, you can give to your children. If you don't have it, you can't give it to them. So make sure you have it so that you can pass it on to your children. That relationship with God where you trust God and you go to him for everything that you need. That is the most important thing that we can do to impact our children for tomorrow. We can't give them what we don't have. I repeat, please start today. It's not too late. It doesn't matter if your child's 20, 40, 10, 1. It doesn't matter. Today is a day of salvation, the word of God says. And you can start today by showing your children how to love God and who God is. And that will take care of everything else that you're worried about. That um, learning difficulty, that um, health issue, whatever it may be. God is the one that's going to take care of all of that, and it's going to start with your faith in him. Amen. So I want to say, and I want to finish it off, just, know, just letting you know and encouraging you that this is a daily battle, but we know that with God, all things are possible. So don't forget God first, and he will take care of the rest. Amen. And last but not least, I want to say to my children, my four children, and my daughter in love, that I love you. I love each and every one of you, and I hope that you know that. Amen. Praise God.